Hi, I'm Vince, and welcome to our channel. Today we're continuing with the build in the minivan. I've continued to use my plumb bob to uh, actually find the vertical points to put this. So the plumb bob, it's definitely my new favorite tool inside the van. I've cut the lengths of the quarter by one and a quarter and and I've finished some of it and I'm just going to do this one final hole but basically I'm I'm the the screw that we're using to fasten this is called a flathead screw because it's flat it's the thread is a quarter 20 the quarter means it fits in a quarter inch hole. And the 20 refers to how many threads per inch. It has 20 threads in, in an inch. It's a standard American. So we're, we're kind of, and the reason I'm using it is because I had it. I have these little flathead quarter 20 and they look like they're about a half inch long. I drilled the quarter inch hole already and here I've already did the uh, countersink and we're having to countersink it because we're using this surface to put wood on. We have to make sure that our screw does not interfere. So we're countersinking. So I'm gonna countersink this one right here. Now you can see that I've gone deep enough that the screw is flush with the surface. The tool that we used is a, called a countersink and you can get it at any hardware store. It's simply a, I think it's called a 60 degree countersink. And on, on aluminum, this is easy to do. So it's, it's, worth, it's worth using the aluminum for what we're doing. Okay, we've got one of the vertical pieces clamped in the vise, and I've indicated, I've pre-found exactly where the hole is. I'm using this, it's called a, a automatic center punch, and you can get cheap ones at Harbor Freight. But you should always pre-punch uh, your hole, because the drill bit wants to wander when you first start drilling. So you just need to make sure that it, uh... when I'm drilling, I, I, I release the pressure every once in a while. Every time you release the pressure, the shavings, stop cutting and it lets them clear away from your if you just continue to cut you'll end up with one long string of metal wrapped around your drill bit if you continue to add kind of release the pressure it will break the chip and you'll end up with short chips rather than one long one this is a quarter 20 tap that you can get at the hardware store and i don't think i mentioned either that the hole that i drilled for this was I believe a 13, let me look, 13 64ths. It was a 13 64ths. It's a little larger than the what the book calls, but for what we're doing, it'll be fine. This is a quarter by a quarter 20 tap, 20, 20 threads per inch, quarter inch, it's a quarter inch diameter. And now we're just gonna simply and we're using WD-40. Works really well as a lubricant. You just make sure your tap is as straight as you can keep it. And the tap self feeds itself into the aluminum once you get it going. And it really isn't very hard to tap aluminum. It's actually an easy material to, to work with. Okay, now that I've done one of the holes. Is that actually the right one? 
Actually, I think I did the bottom one first. No, that is the top one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna put pre-test by putting this, uh, putting this together where. Now that I've tapped the holes that we did over at the vise, I'm going to pre-put this together, but I just wanted to point out that I did have to cheat and mill a little bit out. And the reason is, is because the way I repaired this, I increased the thickness of my material. So now when I put my vertical struts in, it's not going to set in at the right spot. So I did cheat and mill back a little material. If you didn't break your thing, you wouldn't have to do that. Uh, now what I'm going to do is, even though the, the screw would be sufficient to put this together, but because of the application, we're going to glue it with the JB Weld and screw it just to make sure that there's nothing's ever going to come loose. So I'll bring you back after I've put it together with the glue. So now I've screwed it together and we've used the uh, JB Weld and you can just, I mean, you can just tell that this thing is, this is a really, really solid start. Now, I'm thinking that to run this next shelf that's gonna uh, be for the next to the bed, I'm thinking I'm gonna come off of this here. So we'll see, we'll see how that works. But I just wanted to test, and now that I've got, I can swing my kitchen back in, and you can see I still got moves to put my fingers between there as it comes in. It gets a little tight right in there, but that's still plenty of room. It closes right in. This is gonna give us a lot more space. Okay, now that we've done the vertical supports, we focus on the piece that we want. This this will be a shelf across here at the level of the bed is where we'll end up. So I'm trying to figure out where would, where would you attach? Well, it makes sense to attach right there because this is the closest thing I've got. So the way I figure out how to attach that, I, I decide how far would I want this piece to, where would I want it to orientate with this, which I do with this ruler is simulating the orientation with this piece. Then I take a piece of cardboard. I'm kind of taking you back. I already did this, but I want to show you how I came to this conclusion. I took a piece of cardboard. I held it up there. I marked what that intersection was. So I knew what I need to put this ruler where I want it. I transfer that to a piece of scrap material. This is just a I'm a scrapper. I transferred that onto there. I cut that out. I drilled this hole first, held the piece up to there where I, where I wanted it, marked it, drilled it. Is that, let's see, I've got it wrong. It's, it goes like this. I held it up there marked it, drilled it and tapped it. Then I screwed this piece on. So let's see, I have to screw that in here. A big old fumbly fingers trying to. So I've got that piece. Then next is to figure out, I've got that angle, I've got my block, so then I took another piece, which is right here. I got ahead of you. This was my piece of one by quarter. I held it up. I drilled, first I drilled a hole through it. I held it up to my block. 
marked it where I wanted the hole to be, and then did the same thing on this side. I drilled and tapped a hole onto this side. So now I can put another screw on this side. See if I can get a screw. I'm gonna do this a little easier. And I'm going to JB weld this when I'm all done. I'm not just going to depend on the screws. I'm, I want this to be glued. Now, I've created a support for this, this bar, which is going to be a counter surface. And, and I've already taken the time to measure it and bent it, and we're going to attach it and uh, glue it to, this, uh, to the body right here. But I also wanted to show while we're in this position and we're in this spot that I'm going to change the where I put the inverter. You can see I've taken my cable, my red positive cable, just to see how far it would reach from how I'd done it before. And I've decided that I'm going to designate a spot right here, which will be under the bed and the way, the way we had it laid out before, this was our refrigerator. And we used to push the refrigerator in about that far under the bed. I'm going to, the refrigerator is going to have a foam compartment that it slides into. So this area back here, I haven't even decided how we're going to access it, but definitely moving the inverter to here. I'll, I'll make sure that there's plenty of air that can get through this so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't get hot. It can definitely cool itself. 